Chris, let me set the stage for our audience, or better yet, you set the stage. What was going on at the warehouse where you were working? Well, number one, there's no transparency there. But the issue is associates are afraid to come to work um, dealing with this coronavirus. This is uh, life or death. Um, I started seeing people with different types of symptoms, talking about dizziness, vomiting, people had headaches, people were fatigued. And I started to notice that in the beginning of Mar uh, March. And um, from that moment forward, I tried to escalate that to the higher ups. Like, hey, um, I suggest that we quarantine the building and close it down for two weeks um, because there's something going on here. You know, I work with these people 40, 50 hours a week and I noticed the trend and I try to prevent that. I try to be proactive instead of reactive. Um, no success there. And Were so you aware of any confirmed cases uh, of coronavirus with the workers you were in contact with day to day? No, I wasn't. Um, that's the problem. There was no transparency with that. Um, so that's the scary thing about it. You know, you're working with people hand in hand and you don't know whether they even have it or not. And well, obviously, like the rest of us, there are HIPAA laws to protect someone's identity. But mm -hmm. that does not prevent the employer for, from informing you that there is an employee, not by naming that person or anything Absolutely. that can identify them. You don't believe that transparency existed? At your no, aware. not at all. And that's all we were asking for. We wasn't asking for identity. We wanted to know how many cases are we dealing with here? Mm -hmm. Give people the opportunity to make a decision whether they want to come to work or not. What about protective gear? What gear were you and the other employees provided? We were provided with nothing. We had a mask that the inventory for the PPE was depleted weeks ago. You know, think about it. If the medical field don't have uh, PPE, what makes you think the retail companies do? We have almost 5,000 employees in that building. Um, majority of them were not protected. Um, the PPE that we have, the regular gloves that we have are just regular work gloves. They're, they're not latex. Um, they're regular cotton gloves with grip on them to pick up boxes. That's not protecting us. 5,000 people in that warehouse. At any given time, how many of those were you in close proximity to? Um, hundreds. You know, every the, the main break room, it seats about 175 people. What um, do you want to happen next? To close down the building and be sanitized. That's all, that, that's all we were asking for. We had a number of buildings in, uh, across uh, America that were closed down and sanitized. What is the difference between Staten Island? All we were asking for was the building to be closed down and sanitized. That's all we wanted. We would have felt more comfortable coming to work. You led the walkout. What's your employment status right now with them? I'm terminated. Terminated. Yeah. I'm done. Would you Absolutely. be willing to come back if there were concessions made with sanitizing the warehouse? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. This company failed us. Um, the regionals failed us. The executives failed us. The CEO failed us. There's no reason why JFK should remain open when there's a number of undisclosed uh, corona by uh, tested positive cases in that building right now and they still have this building open when they're shutting down buildings with one case I don't want to work for a company I don't care about people because that's what it's about at the end of the day it was never about money for me you know this was about people this is about uh, saving lives that's all it was about for me and I'm going to continue to fight um, unemployed or not I'm going to continue to fight for them we're going to take this battle to the government um, and we got to go to city hall that's what we'll do Christian Small, thank you so much for joining us with your powerful story. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Shortly after the strike started, Amazon issued this statement. These accusations are simply unfounded. We are working hard to keep employees safe while serving communities and the most vulnerable. We have taken extreme measures to keep people safe, tripling down on deep cleaning, procuring safety supplies that are available, and changing processes to ensure those in our buildings are keeping safe distances. And in Staten Island, we are now temperature checking everyone entering the facility.